Okay, g'day all and welcome to another shoot. So I've wanted to do this one for a long, long time, but it's pretty tricky. So what we're going to do today is the final part to our little calculator that we were building. So this is going to be the shunting yard algorithm to turn the uh, infix expression into reverse polish. And then another function to actually evaluate the reverse polish uh, expression. And uh, hopefully our calculator will give some uh, good little mathematical answers. Get out of my face. Uh, okay, so what we're looking at is something yard. Okay, so that's purple. I was there this morning. I was actually looking at this this morning and tried to record this shoot a few times. Uh, one of them, the last time I just tried to record it, I got a phone call from the uh, Microsoft cold call scammers. So, uh, yeah, that's fresh in my mind. If you get a phone call from some folks saying that they're from Microsoft and your computer's sending them errors, and uh, they get you to look at the event viewer, and then they try and get you to uh, give them remote access to your computer. Uh, it's a scam. Yeah, don't give them remote access. Anyway, be that as it may, <laughs> what we're doing today is the shunting out algorithm. So if you come to the uh, Wikipedia page and you scroll down a little bit, you'll find here the algorithm in detail. So this is what we're going to be going by. Yeah, this one just here. And I noticed this morning when I tried to record this that I've actually put in a lot of little mistakes and things that I left out of our calculator. So we'll fix those up as we go. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, so the shunting out algorithm sort of takes place when the user clicks equals. So we might just double click on that. I say double click on that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And it'll take us to here, the uh, event for button equals click. Uh, at the moment, all we've got is a tokenized method. So the string, the expression, is being split into tokens, which is really, really good. So the next thing that we'll do is the shunting out algorithm. And I might just go tokens equals shunting yard. Um, tokens. Okay, so my shunting yard function is going to take those... Uh, tokenized tokens and it's going to also return the uh, tokens but it's going to rearrange them it's going to change them from uh, in fix notation which is what they're in at the moment to uh, reverse polish uh, how's it going to do that let me have a bit of a <laughs> um, okay so first of all it's uh, it's a private method and it's going to return a bunch of tokens it's going to return a bunch of tokens I say and the method's called shunting yard, and it takes as a parameter the tokens. Okay, let's have a bit of a squiz. So, this is what we're coding just here. This is a pseudocode, and it gets pretty interesting, so we'll see how we go. Uh, while there are tokens to be read, so tokens to be read from the tokens parameter here that we've passed, that is. So, while, I'll say index to define that int index equals zero. Uh, I might just use some well index settle down. Well index does not equal well index is less than tokens dot count. Uh, index plus plus. Okay, so we're stepping through the tokens one at a time with an integer called index. Uh, read a token. All right, let's read a token. Uh, token t equals tokens uh, index. There we go, I read, <laughs> I read a token. If the token is a number, then add it to the output queue. All righty, so we're going to need a queue. Q -U -E -U -E. Weird, weird word. Uh, it's a token, and we'll call it the output Q -U -E -U -E. And it equals a new Q U E U E. Uh, okay, so if the token is a number, add it to the output Q. Uh, if uh, T dot get token type equals token type dot number uh, output Q U E U E dot uh, and Q T. Alright, so that's that taken care of. If the token is a number, add it to the output queue. If the token is a function, okay, so we didn't actually look at uh, functions in our shunting yard, but if you want to get a little bit more complicated, you can make your uh, expression parser much, much more flexible by including functions. 
Anyway, we didn't do that, so I'll just ignore that. If the token is a function argument separator, well, we certainly didn't include function argument separator since we didn't include functions, so we'll just ignore that as well. And we'll come down to here. And this, this is where it gets interesting. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, I got excited and kicked a speaker off the desk. It wasn't even doing anything wrong. All right, if the token is an operator, O1. Okay, here we go. So, um, I'll put else. Else if t dot that equals that dot operator, then while there is an operator token O2 on top of the stack, on top of the stack, so we don't actually have a stack at the moment. Yeah, we don't have a stack, so we better make a stack. As a token. So the algorithm works with a queue and a stack. Um, yeah. Op -er -a -tor. So the uh, queue is going to be the output, eventually, of the shunting out algorithm. And the stack is just a temporary area for storing the operators as we see them uh, to make sure that we get them in the right order. So operator stack equals a new stack token. So what was the question? While there is an operator O2 at the top of the stack. While there is an operator O2 at the top of the stack. Okay, well, uh, while um, operator stack dot count does not equal zero, I'll say. Uh, token O2 equals operator stack dot peak. And that would be yeah, it's going to be an operator for us, there's no question. I, actually, it might be a parenthesis. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on. So, while there is an operator, uh, O2 at the top of the stack, and O1 is left associative. Okay, so O1 for us in our code is called T, so I might just T dot... Uh, okay, so this is one of the things that I forgot to do. I forgot to add a bunch of getters and setters for the... Uh, member variables of our token class. So if we come over here to token class and add a getter for the associativity um, public associativity and um, just call it asoc return set it down get return asoc. Uh, okay so while I'm here I might also make getters for these ones. Okay, so symbol needs a getter. Let's just copy this because I'm lazy. Uh, it's a char. And it's called symbol. And return symbol. Okay, get out of here, you're done. Uh, public. Oh, we did associativity already. Public. And uh, it is. Press. I can't even spell proceedings, I'll just. No, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. That one. There you go, that's better. Why are you underlined? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, a getter for the parameter count. Public int, um, let's say, param count. Um, that. Okay, so that's a bunch of getters for those. There is another one, and this is it here. So the um, the getter and setter for the token class's uh, value member variable uh, will reveal something quite stupid that I've done, and that's I've used a keyword for a variable name. <laughs> yeah, so value is actually a keyword. So if we go to write a getter and setter for it, we go public, um, public what? Maybe public value? Get out of here. That's a double, stupid. <laughs> okay, so we can say get and return value. But when we write the setter, set, uh, we can't say value equals value because, I mean, <laughs> C sharp doesn't know what we're talking about. And sometimes I wonder myself. So what we should do is actually rename that. Uh, I think val is better. 
Yeah, val equals, well, that one's going to stay the same. Val equals value. Yeah, and that will actually appear somewhere else as well. Uh, somewhere down here. That's oh, here. Yeah, so remember to change all of the uh, keyword values there I accidentally and rather stupidly used for my variable name. Uh, anyway, that's getters and setters for all of the things in the token class, so maybe now we can stop mucking around and move on. Uh, t dot, what's going on here? T dot. Uh, okay, so T dot associativity. Uh, if the associativity equals that dot left, is left associative, and the precedence is equal to that of O2. So left uh, and T dot precedence equals O2 dot precedence, or, and we're down here, uh, or what? Or O1 has precedence less than that of O2, so T is O1, so T dot precedence is less than O2 dot precedence. Alright, so if any of those things happen, uh, what happens? Pop O2 off the stack onto the output queue, so that's a rather... Uh, interesting line of code. It's the output queue dot nq and operator stack dot pop. There she is. Okay, so after all of that nonsense is done, we want to. Well, actually, we should down here else break. Else breal. <laughs> Just take some time out to breal once in a while. Um, okay, so else break is going to break out of the while loop if the conditions up here aren't true. So while there is an operator, uh, you know, token on top of the stack and all of that sort of stuff, if that's not true, then we really want to break out of the loop. So that's this else break down here. Uh, all right, so after the whole while loop, what we want to do is push 01, which is called T in our code, onto the stack. So um, operator stack dot push and T. Uh, okay, so that's the complicated part just there. This whole section just here is just baffling to read in uh, pseudocode, but just as soon as you start changing it over to C++ or whatever, it starts to make a lot of sense. Uh, anyway, we're done with that. We're done with that. All that's doing is figuring out the order of the operations based on their precedence and their associativity. Alrighty, so else if it's a left parenthesis, else uh, if T dot not the precedence. Else if T dot get token type equals token type dot left brace. Uh, push it onto the stack so we don't actually need those braces. Um, operator stack dot push and T. Yeah, I think I might actually have to put in here that um, if O2 dot get token type does not equal token type dot operator. Break. Yeah, I think I think I think if it happened to be a bracket, then uh, it would break there. Uh, I mean, break literally, not break out of the loop. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay, that's that's good. So we did that. Uh, if token is a left parenthesis, then push it onto the stack. All right, good. Uh, if the token is a right parenthesis, then we've got a bit more fun to do. So else if t dot get token type equals token type dot right brace. Uh, what do we do? Until the token at the top of the stack is a left parenthesis, pop operators off the stack onto the output queue. Okay, good. That's a little easier said than done. Um, all right, while operator stack dot peak does not equal, well, the type, get token type, does not equal token type dot left brace. Okay, so while it's not a left brace, uh, we want to uh, output q dot in q operator stack dot pop. Is that right? Until the token at the top of the stack is a left parenthesis, while that is not a left parenthesis. Uh, pop operators off the stack onto the output queue. Yeah, that's right. Uh, pop the left parenthesis from the stack, but do not, but do not pop it onto the output queue. 
pop the left button not on. Okay, so this is just popping it to oblivion. So at the end, after that while loop, we pop the left parenthesis to oblivion. We pop the left. I don't think that sentence has ever been said. There it is. <laughs> pop the left parenthesis to oblivion. To the garbage collector. Collect that, garbage collector. Uh, all right, moving along. If the token at the top of the stack is a function token, well, it's not going to be because we've got no functions. Uh, if the stack runs out while finding a left parenthesis, then there are mismatched parentheses. Okay, so right here, if if operator stack dot counts equals zero, um, I might just throw throw a new exception. Mismatched per par and sis parenthesis parentheses. Okay, that's good. So when there are no more tokens to read, which is outside of no, no, this <laughs> no wait a minute, wait a minute. This this goes down here. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. Up there, it's got something to do with the, um, yeah, when we're looking for the other uh, brace, the other parenthesis, I actually put it up here in the uh, operator bit. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's good. So when there are no more tokens to read, when there are no more tokens to read, okay, so that's going to be outside of this. Let's see if we can find the matching brace down here. Okay, that's right here. There are no more tokens to read right here. While there are still operators on the stack. Okay, so while the operator stack dot count does not equal zero, what happens? Uh, if the operator on top of the stack is a parenthesis, then there are mismatched parentheses. Okay. Um, okay, if if operator stack dot peak dot get token type equals token type dot left brace or I can just copy all of this stuff again and you make it right brace this time. So if it's either of the two braces then we better throw an error again. This same one I guess. Mismatched parentheses. There we go. Mismatched parentheses. Uh, pop operator. Pop the operator onto the output queue. Okay. So if it's if it's not that nonsense, if it's not a brace, then there's no mismatched parentheses. What we want to do is this weird line here. Output queue dot in queue operator stack dot pop. Okay, and then we're done. Yeah. So we're done down here. What we're going to do now is return uh, the output queue dot to array. And that should be about the shunting yard algorithm. Very, very good. All right, so fingers crossed. I'll put a breakpoint right there and we'll run it and see what happens. This is going to be amazing. Okay, um, let's try 9 plus 6 divided by 5 minus 2. All right, let's see what the shunting yard algorithm reckons of that. Well, it reckons there's seven operators there. Let's have a bit of a squiz at them. Uh, we got a nine, we got a six, a five, a two, a minus. Oh yeah, that was in the bracket, so that gets done first. Okay, good. Uh, we got a divide, and we've got a plus. Okay, so that's reverse Polish notation. Good stuff. It seems to have worked. It seems to have worked. It seems to have worked based on that little test. What you want to do once... Oh, well, we'll get through it at the end. Um, well, the next thing that we want to do is uh, evaluate this expression. So the beautiful thing about the shunting yard or reverse Polish is how easy it is to evaluate. So the the real place where this shines is where you're able to compile code to some bytecode first using this shunting out algorithm, sort of compile it to reverse Polish notation, and then when you come to run uh, your program, say in some scripting language or whatever, 
uh, you can run it really fast and evaluate the expressions really, really fast. I hope that makes sense. Uh, anyway, the next thing that we want to do is maybe double uh, answer equals calculate expression. And that's going to take tokens as a parameter. Um, okay, so calculate expression is going to return a double. I might make it private as well, just so nobody looks at it. Um, double. And I'm going to copy this. Calculate expression and token. Tokens. Calculate expression. Okay, so things are going to get a little bit interesting here as well. Uh, there's another page in Wikipedia or something somewhere, but let's just reverse reverse Polish notation. Okay, so the Wikipedia page for reverse Polish notation gives a really simple little algorithm for evaluating these expressions. So if we scroll down, we'll find it. Uh, it's here, postfix algorithm. Alrighty, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, while there are input tokens left, okay, so I might just int index again, and while uh, index does not, well, I might make it less again since we did that last time. Who knows why I use count with braces there and not above. Uh, while there are input tokens left, read the next token from input. Okay, uh, token uh, t equals tokens index. There we go, I read a token from the input. <laughs> if the token is a value, push it onto the stack. Okay, quite happily assuming that we've got a stack. Let's make one. Um, I think oper operand, operand stack. Uh, yeah, so this stack just here is going to collect the operands as they are read from the uh, expression. And whenever we find a, an operator, we're just going to pop the uh, operands off that stack, perform the operation, and push the result back to the stack. And that's basically all there is to this uh, little function. Uh, it's really, really quick. Okay, so if the token is a value, push it onto the stack. Alrighty, so if t dot get that equals token type dot number um, operand stack dot push t. Okay, that's good. Otherwise, the token is an operator. Operators here include uh, operators and functions. All right, we don't have functions. Uh, it is known a <laughs> it is known a priori. Um, we know this a priori that that the operator takes n arguments. <laughs> yeah, we do too. We know a priori that the operator takes n arguments because the token class has um, this little getter and setter down here, or getter. Yeah, the param count. So it's known a priori uh, that the operator takes n arguments. If there are fewer than n arguments on the stack, so I might just, where did I even, I'll just put an else here. Uh, so if, uh, if operand stack dot count is less than uh, t dot param count, if there are fewer than that, error, error. The user has input. It's, the user has not input sufficient values in the expression. <laughs> That's pretty snappy. I'm going to copy that. That's cool. Uh, okay, so if that happens, then we might just throw a new exception with this really snappy thing here. The user has not input sufficient. The user. Um, otherwise, so if there are enough operators on the stack, then we don't necessarily want to quit with an error. Uh, else, pop the top n values from the stack. Um, okay, so list uh, token um, operands, I guess, equals new that and form i equals zero, while i is less than t the param count i plus plus. Uh, what was it? Pop them from the stack. I'm going to zoom in. I might make this a bit bigger as well. Um, so what was it? Pop it from the stack. Operand stack. So it's going to be list, list. Uh, it's going to be operands. Operands.add that.pop. 
operands.add operator stack.pop. Oh, we programmers talk some nonsense. Uh, all right, evaluate the operator with the values as arguments. Okay, so I'm going to make another function here. I guess it's going to return a token. Well, you just don't type token. Uh, evaluate operator. T, comma, main bait. <laughs> uh, evaluate operator and operands. Uh, I don't know what it's going to return. I guess it's going to return a token, but we'll see. Let's, let's just have a bit of a... Uh, private private token evaluate operator um, op uh, ATAR. I'll just call it oper because I think operator is a keyword yes and list of tokens called operands okay um, push the returned results if any onto the stack so we're going to push this um, onto the operand stack I might just put that here now push. we're going to push the results of this onto the operator stack uh, evaluate the operator alright so let's use a switch uh, let's use a switch on t dot I say t dot oh it's not called t anymore it's called oper oper okay t dot symbol yeah, we'll do a switch on t.symbol, and I might say default down the bottom here, row new exception uh, unknown operator. Unknown operator. I oh, will use a snappy English from up there, that was pretty good. The user used. <laughs> and the user used an unknown operator. Um, okay, so the user's not actually going to see that. Oh, they might actually if, if we don't put a try catch around the uh, whatever. Uh, push the returned results if any. Okay, so the uh, case for um, plus would be I might actually just change the first operands. So operands, it's not going to be used again. So operands zero dot val plus equals operands uh, one dot val, and we know a priori that there's two uh, operands there, <laughs> and then we break. And down here, I might actually return operands zero. Okay, so that's plus taken care of. Let me just zoom in. I hope it's not flashing. Sometimes the computer flashes. It's it's only in the, the YouTube video. It doesn't do that on my screen. I'd buy a new screen if it did. Uh, good -o. Uh So the next one we'll do is minus. Now I always, always get this wrong. It's going to give us the... Um, it's going to give us the operands either in the order so that we can just do that uh, or alternatively... Um, the operands might actually be switched, and what, what the answer might actually be is operands 1 minus operands 0. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see in a minute if that's the um, case when we test our amazing program out. So division is the same as well, but the case for multiplication is pretty easy. Uh, times equals. And the case for division is also pretty easy. Except that we might have to swap the operands, like um, subtract, since uh, both division and subtract, the uh, order of operands matters. And there was another one that we added as well, and that was the unary negative operator. Uh, which, if you've got um, Microsoft Office and you use Excel, you'll see that they've not actually done this in a very normal way. They don't use a unary negative operator. Instead, they just kind of say that, you know, negative 5 is a number. Uh, instead of saying that it's a negative operator applied to positive 5. Uh, good. Um, so the symbol for the unary negative operator we said was this uh, underscore here. So we better add that as well. You could make a unary positive operator pretty easily as well if you wanted. And you can make power operators, log operators, whatever you want really. Um, so if it's negative that, then that happens. But it's zero. So operand zero's value equals whatever you know negative operand zero's value. 
and then we return operand zero at the end. So that should just about should just about do it. Uh, operand stack dot push whatever that was. So we're back in the uh, calculate expression algorithm now. Now that we've written our evaluate operator function, now uh, push the returned result if any onto the stack. If there is only one value in the stack. Okay, so this is outside the while loop. This is right down here, right when we're about to finish. So we've pretty much been through the whole, uh, all of the tokens in the list, and it reckons if there's only one value on the stack, the value is the result of the calculation. All right, so let's return that. Return. Well, no, settle down. You've got to, you've got to do it properly. E off. <laughs> if operand stack, if operand stack dot count equals one. Then return operand stack dot pop dot val. And that's that right there. Otherwise, there are more values in the stack. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Uh, so we give them an error. The user has input too many values. Okay, else throw new exception. Uh, error. The user has input too many values. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I might just fix up that and get rid of my. There we go. So that should just about do the trick. Now what we might want to do is uh, up here put a try and a catch around these and just print out any error messages we get just in case things go awry. Uh, exception E. Is it text or e.toString? E.message. Yeah. Uh, okay, so fingers crossed again. Let's see, what's this on about? This is um, string to windows that to temp... Oh my gosh. <laughs> the template equals that. I don't think so. But what's this whinging about? A local variable can't be called E. We'll call it EF then. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's see how we go. So 9 plus 6 equals... Not a lot. And stop. Why did that not work? Um, answer equals that and txt output dot text equals answer dot to string. To string underscore content loaded. <laughs> Thanks in sense. He's always looking out for me. Uh, nine plus six. No, it's pausing somewhere. Let's have a bit of a look. Where are we? The call stack contains only external code. What are you talking about? Okay, so this is my worst nightmare. What's happening? Let's go to here and see if it gets there. 9 plus 6 equals. Actually, we know that it gets there. It doesn't get through the... Um, it doesn't get through the calculate expression. Yeah, it gets through the shunting out, but it doesn't get through the calculate expression. And I think... I think it's because I never... <laughs> I think it's because I never actually incremented the uh, index. So it's reading the first token millions and millions of times. <laughs> That's good. It's really cool, expression calculator just <laughs> reads the first thing you type millions of times. Okay, 9 plus 6 equals 15, it does too! 9 divided by 6. Uh, yeah, I guess. 9 minus 8? Hold on. 9 minus 8 equals 1. Negative 1. Okay, so there's the, there's the problem. Uh, 9 minus 8 is actually positive 1, but in the... Uh, what was it in the uh, evaluate uh, operator part of our of our uh, code? Uh, I accidentally switched the operands around the wrong way. So that's proof, though, that what we need to do is uh, actually swap this. Uh, instead of 
operand 0 equals you know subtract operand 1 what we actually want is operand 1 minus operand 0 and it'll also mean that this is the same down here for division so um, operand 1 divided by this one operand 0 we'll give it another go okay so 9 minus 8 equals 1 good stuff 9 divided by 6 Oh, wait a second. 9 divided by 6 equals 1.5. That's much more logical than the last answer I got. I don't know what happened before. I got 0 0.003 or something weird like that. Uh, okay, clear. Let's go 3.5 plus 9 divided by 7 minus 1. Bracket, bracket. Equals 5. <laughs> I hope it does. Uh, anyway, what you really want to do once you've made one of these little expression calculators here is uh, find some um, basic algebra examples on uh, on Google. So maybe for teaching, like I don't know, year whatever year you learn those at school, uh, whatever whatever year you learn about braces and, and brackets and algebra at school, uh, find some of those. So something like uh, maths expression examples. Yeah, something like this. This will give you a bunch of test expressions that you can run through your calculator and uh, see if your calculator gives exactly the same answer as get out of my face as... Um, well, don't go here. Oh, this might help, yeah. Oh, no. No, it's not going to help. It's got variables. But you want a bunch of maths expressions somewhere. You'll find them. They're on the internet somewhere. And uh, test your calculator out. Anyway, that's been a really interesting tutorial series. It didn't, it didn't really turn out how I wanted. Honestly, I, um, I think I know why folks don't just outright code projects on uh, YouTube. It's, <laughs> it's not easy. Anyway, thanks for listening all, and uh, I hope to get stuck into some of the other tutorial series I've been doing in the very near future. Cheers.